Now, in the previous lesson, we established the differences between kinetic and static friction. If you just simply landed on the video, make sure that you take a look at the previous release to understand the concept better before attempting the example problems we're going to be doing in this current lesson. Now, in this lesson, we will be practicing on the application for calculating the kinetic friction and the static friction. Now, if you are new to our channel, make sure that you join our community by smashing that like and subscribe buttons. And let's get right to the lesson. So in this current lesson, we're going to have straightforward application on the concepts of kinetic friction and static friction. Now, if you haven't watched the previous lesson, make sure that you do so before you try and attempt these problems by yourself, because this lesson is just simply practice on what we have learned in the previous lesson. So let's have a couple examples on kinetic and static friction just to apply what we have learned let's write down the formulas first the force for kinetic friction for static friction equals to mu s multiplied by the normal force and the force for the kinetic friction equals to mu k multiplied by the normal force so if we have an example let's say example number one we have a box and we are, which, which weighs 25 kilograms. And then we are going to be pushing the box with a force F on the ground. And the box is moving and the box is moving at a constant velocity. This is very important. A constant velocity means the net force is zero. So the velocity is constant. Now, if you have no idea what does this clue mean, just take a, make sure that you watch one of the lessons that we have already shared, where you get to learn about Newton's second law, which says that F equals to MA, and it only applies if you have a net force. But in this case, the net force is zero, so we have a constant velocity. So this hint tells us that we're going to have friction in the other direction. Since it's moving, the box is actually moving, this is going to be the kinetic friction and this kinetic friction is going to be canceling the force f because why constant velocity the net force is zero if the kinetic friction the coefficient of kinetic friction is given to us as 0 0.2 what is i say calculate the force applied now at first this might seem a bit difficult but it's not quite straightforward the first thing that you always do in any physics problem is you're going to be writing down what is given to you now i do have the mass it's 25 kilograms i do have my coefficient of kinetic friction it's 0.2 now the velocity is constant and I need to find the force applied now since the velocity is constant I'm going to say force net equals to zero in this case if I'm going to assume the right side to be positive the direction of my movement I'm going to end up with the following the force applied minus my frictional force K equals to zero which means my fictional force K equals to the force applied. So we have a hint right here. Yes, if I'm able to calculate the frictional force, I'm able to find my force applied. And how do I go about this? Straightforward. Let's go and apply the formula for kinetic friction equals to mu K multiplied by N and frictional force equals to the mu for the kinetic friction is given to me as 0.2 now what is n in this case the normal force now if you take a look at the block we have the force of gravity fg which equals to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity which will be counteracted by the normal force and as we have said in the previous lesson the 
in normal force will be equal to the force of gravity will be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. So if I'm going to replace the numbers directly into the equation, my mass, which is 25 kilograms, multiplied by 9.81, so I've taken this part and I've put it right here. The force of kinetic friction, crunch all of these numbers onto into the calculator. You have 0 0.2 times 25 times 9.81, and you'll end up with the value of 49 newtons. This is my kinetic friction. But the problem is not over yet because they've asked us for what is the force applied. Now, since the kinetic friction is going to be to the left side, right, towards the left, so, the force applied equals to 49 newtons towards the right. Makes perfect sense because they are opposing to each other. They are opposing to each other. So, this is example number one where we are going, to, we're just, we simply addressed the uh, kinetic friction. Just simply recap what we have done. We wanted to calculate the force applied, which is causing the movement under constant acceleration or constant velocity. And if we have constant velocity, it means the acceleration is zero. So, the net force is zero. And this is where we have used this formula to come up with the fact that your force applied is getting cancelled by your friction right so i'm going to be just uh, representing this part without any sign just simply magnitude wise and i just simply indicated the signs here logically after the application is done but you can just simply say as well f equals to minus fk and you can go about the problem as well since we have uh, established from the get-go that to the right side is going to be positive now, we do have the mass given to us, we have the coefficient of kinetic friction given to us, and we have established that the velocity is constant. Then we transition to solving the formula to find the kinetic friction, which equals to mu k multiplied by the normal force. And we have said that the normal force is your force of gravity, which is the weight, which equals to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. So I went ahead and I just simply replaced into the equation and I calculated the frictional force to be my 49 newtons which is to the left however because they wanted the applied force this applied force is 49 newtons to the right so this wraps up our first example make sure that you pause the video go through it one step at a time and try to attempt it by yourself on a sheet of paper now let's go to example number two. Now example number two, we're going to have an application addressing the um, static friction. We're going to have an application addressing the static friction. Let's say you do have a box. Now the box has a weight off this is a box and it has a weight of 134 newtons this is the force of gravity which is the weight 134 newtons and we're trying to pull this box with the force f but no motion so if you have an indication that there's no motion, it means we're going for the static F, the static friction. Now, if the coefficient of static friction is given to us as 0 0.55, how hard are you going to to pull the box To make it move now this is a great example for the application of static friction if we have a box applying a force yet there is no movement we have the force of gravity which is the weight of the box which is 134 newtons and we have the static friction given to us which is a mu s now the question is how can I 
or what is the value of the force that I'm going to apply in order to make this box start the movement. Excellent. Now we're going to find out what is the static friction first of all using the formula mu s multiplied by n and obviously like we have established you have to write down what is given to you. So we have the weight which is the force of gravity in this case obviously it equals to my normal force n so my force of gravity equals to n which equals to 134 newtons and I have the coefficient of static friction which equals to 0 0.55 newtons and these are the key important indications written to me I have no motion now I'm going to try to use the information that I have to calculate my static friction so my static friction equals to 0 0.55 but keep in mind i think we have missed something we have to keep in the sign less than or equal to this is the core concept from this current example because as long as we are less than or equal to this value, we are going to remain in the static situation. So 0 0.55 multiplied by 134, my static frictional force is less than or equal to 73.7 newtons. So what does that mean? So it means if I apply a force F, which is less than or exactly equal to 73.7 newtons, my box will not move. I have to cross this force. I have to apply a stronger force more than 73.7 newtons. So how about if I apply a force of... 73.8 73.9 or 74 newtons all of them will be the tipping point where you go from the static situation to the kinetic so if you cross 73.7 let's say i'll go for 74 newtons straightforward increment we go from 73.7 let's round up we'll go for 74 newtons now 74 newtons is more than enough to actually start the movement of my box so now you have a clear idea what does it mean to use the sign less than or equal to because if we're in static situation it means we're not moving so I have to cross a certain numerical level to be able to move. And with this, this, this number that you need to cross is calculated with using the mu s multiplied by the normal force. In this case, it's 73.7 newtons. Once we cross it, we're going to be rounding up. We have 74 newtons. Now let's recap the steps that we have done for the problem. We said we have a box. There is no motion. I'm trying to pull the box. The weight of the box is 134 newtons. The coefficient of static friction is 0.55. Now the question is, how hard are you going to be pulling the box to make it move? To cross the force of static friction. So I need to calculate my static friction. And we have established the importance of the sign where we say less than or equal to mu s, right? Now, always, always, any physics problem, we're going to write down what is given to us. And we have the force of gravity, we have the coefficient of static friction, and we have the indication that there's no motion, which led us to use the formula for the static friction. And we said less than or equal to, it means we have to cross this limit in order to start the movement. So we're going to replace the values, and we got up the frictional force to be less than or equal to the static frictional force to be less than or equal to 73.7 newtons this is the upper limit if you cross that 
we're going to have the kinetic force, frictional force. We're going to transition. So in order to start this movement, we're going to apply 74 newtons. So these are two straightforward great examples on the kinetic friction and the static friction. Make sure that you replay the video, replay the lesson, take a look at it, and you apply it step by step because this is a great application on the formulas that we have applied or learned in the previous lesson. Now you should be more comfortable with the whole aspect of calculating static and kinetic friction and once your exam is on the door you should be able to crush those concepts. Make sure that you try to attempt these problems, watch the video again and again and pause it for a bit, try to solve it by yourself and make sure that every single step is quite clear for you. If you are preparing for your upcoming physics exam, here's my advice to you. As an educator who taught the subject for a number of years, let me tell you how you should study in order to prepare well for the exam. Or at this point, how to solve the problems in a good way that will help you get good grades in your ex examination. And in the upcoming video, I'll tell you how to study well for the exam. Now, the first thing that you need to do, always prepare ahead of time. Do not wait for the last minute to start studying. Make sure that you do study, let's say one to two weeks before your examination and break down the material to small sections or segments. Go through it, go through the theoretical end, then go through the application. Make sure that you solve a variety of problems such that you're able to uh, practice different terminologies, different givens, different knowns and unknowns, and make sure that you follow this sequence of steps because this is essential for any physics problem. Always write down what is given to you in the, in the problem. Write down what is the known, what is the unknown. Then make sure that everything is quite clearly laid out for you and you have understood the problem properly. Then think about the equation that you need to use and pull out of your pocket that will, is going to utilize whatever is given to you to help you find the unknown. Once you're done with the second step, try to use the formula in the correct fashion, get, get the answer, and do not forget to put the units. For example, the force of friction is measured with newtons. You don't want to just simply have the number five flying around on your piece of paper. That could be anything, five bananas, five apples, five meter per second. So you have to be specific, especially when it comes to your physics examination. So these are the key points that will help you systematically solve the problems. And once you are done, revise once, twice, and three times. Because there's, no, there's nothing wrong with revising to make sure that maybe you missed a decimal point here or a calculation mistake there. Now on that note, I'm going to leave you off and hopefully you found this lesson beneficial and this advice quite helpful for your upcoming examination. And I'll see you in the next lesson.